In this video, we're gonna create Instagram style vertical video animations right here in After Effects. So if you're looking to showcase any sort of information in a vertical video setup, this tutorial is gonna go through several really cool techniques to help you get started. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel, Sun Dove Film. So we're gonna go through several really useful techniques to help engage your audience, but also go through some of the fundamentals to put in together vertical videos here in After Effects. So if you're ready to put together some really cool stories, whether you do it for Instagram or another social media website, or you just need a vertical video animation, we have some cool ones in here for you. So drop a like on this video and let's get started. And as always, you can download project files for free if you want to break down or if you want to follow along. You know, I find that when you're designing a vertical video motion graphic that's going to go on, say, a social media platform like Instagram, you want to get people's attention right away. So the first motion graphic that we're going to go through here is just a quick glance of a first title here that just has a lot of moving parts. It's to get people's attention onto what is important, which is obviously maybe your call to action to download something uh, or whatever your main message is. So we're essentially going to build these opening transition elements first. All right, so since we're doing vertical video work here, what we need to do is make sure that the composition settings are at least 1080 by 1920, a nine by 16 aspect ratio, right? So once you have those settings ready to go, you're ready to start working. So we already have a title on here and we're gonna animate this title in via like a distortion type effect. So first things first, we can create a quick background here. I'm just grab the rectangle tool and draw out a white background and we'll put it underneath our title. And then I wanna go ahead and create a new composition here and I wanna call this uh, mats. And we're gonna make sure this is nine by 16 aspect ratio. All right, so what we're doing here is we're gonna grab the rectangle tool and we're gonna just draw out like this nice thin, uh, you know, line here like this. And then simply we'll come here to effect, distort, and we're gonna grab transform. All right, and we'll go to the effects controls. We'll add a keyframe for position and we'll move this keyframe over. And we'll bring up the Y value to go right above our composition like so. So then we no longer see that rectangle. So this will just position downward. Now you're probably saying, why didn't I just not use, you know, P on my keyboard for position to animate this way? Because it simply won't work this way for what we're trying to do and you'll see why. So back to our keyframes, we can select them, hit F9 for easy ease. And you know, I love doing these sort of animations where you just drag the both points into the middle and it's just gonna create more of a snapping animation. Anyway, what we wanna do is duplicate this and we'll simply just move this over and we'll do one more duplicate and we'll move this over here to the right side. Then we'll hit U on our keyboard and we'll simply just kind of move these keyframes over just by a few frames like this, create a staircase animation. So then what we wanna do is come here, toggle switch to the modes until you see the adjustment layer icon. Go ahead and turn all these into adjustment layer. Go back to your original composition, we'll go into our project and we'll bring this into our project like so. Then all we're gonna do is click on this continuously rasterize icon right here in the middle. So by following these settings, you'll have this in transition that will animate everything in underneath the matte layer. So the next part of this video is to talk about creating a transition over from the grabbing part of their vertical video techniques here over to the bulk of what your story or your messaging should be. So we're gonna create this border to help create that transition over. And it just adds more attention grabbing elements. So once again, we'll create a new composition and we'll call this reveal and click OK. So from here, we're going to grab the rectangle tool. We'll make sure the fill is set to a very dark, dark gray and click OK. And we're just going to draw out a rectangle like this. So next up, we want to grab the pan behind tool and make sure the anchor point is at the bottom of this shape. And then we'll hit S on keyboard for scale and we'll add a keyframe for this, you know, maybe at 12 frames. And then we'll break the chain for scale and set it to zero percent. So then we'll have this animation, make them easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9. Then we can take this layer, we can duplicate it, and then we can move it over to the other side of our composition. Then we hit R on keyboard for rotation, set to 180 degrees. And then we'll just make sure it's moved back at the top. So now we'll have this animation like so. Then we do the same thing for the top and bottom. So you'll animate one of these you know, lines from the horizontal perspective. And as before, we'll grab the pan behind tool and make sure it's set to one of the sides. And then once again, you'll scale this by hitting S on keyboard, move the keyframe forward, break the chain, set the X value of the scale to 0%. And now you'll have a line like this, beautiful. Make them easy, easy keyframes, duplicate the layer, move it to the bottom, and then we can just rotate this 180 degrees and move it back into place. Then the only thing I wanna do here is offset our layers in time so they don't all come in at the same exact moment. Beautiful. So. Here's what we have. And then I want to add one more element to this. So what I'm going to do here is grab the rectangle tool this time around. 
We're gonna set the fill to none and the stroke to solid color. Then I'm gonna create a rectangle to kind of just close in on the center by a little bit and make sure it's centered in our composition. And then I will just bring the endpoint in, you know, a little bit after the animation's done. So here we have it, everything comes in and then it just does that. And that's what exactly what I want to do because I want it to be a jarring, you know, sort of cut animation. So now that we're done, we'll go back to our main composition. We'll bring a reveal comp into here and we'll make sure we offset it in our timeline. So then we have some time here to see what's going on. So our original title comes in and then this animation happens. So one thing I'd like to do is grab our text title layer, hit Astron keyboard for scale, and right one's about to get cut off. I'd like to add a keyframe for scale, move forward by one frame, and scale it down. And I'll create that really cool jarring animation. Beautiful. Also, right when it closes up on the title, I also wanna make sure it scales down with that as well. So one frame right before that happens, we'll add a keyframe for scale, move forward by one frame, and just have the title go down as well. So it's all said and done, we'll have some animation consistencies within this opening graphic. Since we're doing vertical video motion graphics, this is a great time to briefly mention our Stories Pack here for After Effects. Instead of creating everything from scratch, you can use Stories Pack, which contains a total of 1,200 templates and 300 vertical video motion graphics. You can browse and apply templates right here into your project. From there, you can change the text and you can drop in a picture or a video and then you're done. You can check out the entire pack right off our website with that link below and start saving time. All right, so next up, I wanna add a video or a photo or some sort of background uh, that you can insert into your edit. So to do this, what we can do is grab the rectangle tool. Uh, we'll make sure fill is turned on and we'll turn off the stroke. And I'm gonna just create like a rectangle like this just, and make sure it's centered in our composition. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in our video footage or a photo and I'll make sure it's gonna be underneath that shape layer that we just created. I'll toggle switch the modes and set the track mat to an alpha mat. This way I'll take the form of that rectangle perfectly. And then simply we'll move these layers over. So then we'll have our original opening here and then it'll just cut over to this. Now it's a little bit underwhelming. So what I'll do is come here to layer new null object and I'll parent both of these layers to the null object. And, and right there when these come on, I'll hit S from my keyboard for scale and we'll add a keyframe for this. Maybe we'll actually make this a little bit larger like so, and then we'll move forward in time by a little bit and set it to 100%. So this way we'll have our original reveal on here and then it'll kind of continue that flow of animation uh, to our sequence here. All right, so now the last thing we need to do is create the final titles here. So uh, since we're working with a background video or a photo here, I like to just grab the rectangle tool, we'll set it to white because we're keeping a black and white theme and I did put a tint effect on our background footage. Obviously that's up to you. So what I'm gonna do is just draw out a rectangle to go across our composition like this. And I'll make sure the pan behind tool is centered up. And one thing I'll do is I'll parent this to that null object as well. So then it'll hold that same animation. And we'll make sure that this is large enough to fit what we want here. And then of course, bring in the endpoint so it all comes in at the same exact moment. All right, so from here, you can grab your tech tile tool and start typing out some titles. So I went ahead and typed out my two titles here. One thing we might want to do is just parent these to the null object as well. So we can hold that same animation. And now we can animate these. So we'll open up our download or our first title here, go to animate and add tracking to this. And what we'll do is come here to the very first frame and we can maybe add a keyframe for tracking, move it forward in time by just a little bit until like you know, we match those keyframes up perfectly. And then we can scrunch down on our title by a little bit by going to like negative 30. And this will kind of help with that opening animation. Another thing we do is grab our swipe, our next title, right? And go to animate and we just add like an opacity to this, uh, set the opacity to 0%, open up range selector one, add a keyframe for start, move forward in time, you know, by a little bit and then set this up to 100%. Go to the advanced tab and where it says randomize order, set it to on and now it'll animate on randomly like that. And that's cool. One last thing I would like to do is grab our banner, hit S on keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for this, make sure the chain is broken, move that forward in time, and then set the scale to 0%. So this way it'll animate on, and then we can offset like some of these titles here, uh, just kind of fit what we want to do. So now as we go through this, we have our opening animation, and then we get into what is important, which is the call to action or whatever information you wish to display. Of course, you can put as much information on this banner as you want. I just want to show a few animation principles to help you going here but for the most part here's a handful of techniques to get people you know engaged onto what you're doing with some really quick animations and then the important information comes in after that 
So now that we're at the end of the video, if you want more cool and exciting content like this, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, but also you can check our Instagram. We have some really cool design content on there as well. That link is below. And you can also download our free motion graphic packs. Those links are in the description below. And always be creative.